Okay guys, so we've got a uh, 2013 Camaro that we're having AC issues with whenever you're on a somewhat of a long trip. The AC will get so cold that the uh, uh, air coming out starts being restricted. And then obviously the air starts warming up and eventually the uh, air starts blowing cold again but then it goes through the same cycle. I'm pretty sure the evaporator's freezing up so we're going to take a look at some data here and we're going to see what uh, what we can have going on. So I've got the, uh, this is the launch X431. Uh, I've been trying to use it more than my Autel or my X tool just to compare this to the uh, to both of them. So we're going to see what's going on here. We're going to go with uh, system selection and we're going to scroll down here and we're going to take a look at the, uh, the HVAC module HVAC control module uh, data stream is what we want and this gives you different types of data that you can pull up uh, what I want to see is the evaporator temperature for sure but I also want to see the compressor signal uh, is the compressor engaged, not engaged, you know, that sort of thing. So we're going to go with this one, which is permission data. And, uh, and we're just going to, we'll go ahead and select all these. And let's see what we got here. We got good high side pressure. Air conditioning clutch is engaged, uh, so there is a, obviously a problem. You can see we've got at least, what, 30, 30, at least 36, 37 degrees uh, there on the temp gauge. That's at idle. You know, you'd look at that and, and say, man, that's, that, that's about as good as it gets, and that is about as good as it gets. In fact, that's about as good as it should get. But when you look here at the uh, air conditioning evaporator temperature sensor, it's showing 120 degrees. Now, that's obviously not correct. You can see that on this gauge, we're showing at least 35, 36 degrees. I'll even take the, uh, the thermal imager here. It's showing 37 degrees. Let's warm it up. What I'm looking for is the, well, first of all, the compressor should already be disengaged with temperatures that low. You can see right there on the thermal imagers, that's showing 35 degrees, 34.5 degrees, 33. And I've just bumped the RPM up a little bit, get a little bit more airflow, get the, get, get the uh, compressor humming. 33 to 32 is when it's, things start freezing up. There's 32 degrees. 32.9 let me rev it up just a little bit more let's see if we can get her drop down to 30 now the temp sensor is down to 118 degrees there's 30.8 30.1 29 degrees all right now everybody would probably look at that and think man that's awesome you know, I'd love to have nice cold 29 degree air on a 105 degree day. The problem is the evaporator is freezing up right now. So eventually that cold air is going to stop. You can see the temperature of the evaporator is, according to the scan tool, is 114.8 uh, degrees. Hopefully that's coming through. Hard for me to tell on the uh, screen. So we clearly have a problem here now it could either be the sensor itself or wiring or even the computer uh, may not be interpreting it right but nonetheless uh, we're gonna have to get to this temp sensor pull it out uh, I'll see if the service data's got uh, values for the different temperatures that it should uh, 
have it, you know, or certain resistances that it should have at certain temperatures. Uh, they usually have a chart that goes from, you know, one extreme to the other and gives you a rough idea whenever you put a meter to it, uh, what kind of resistance it should have. And so we're going to, we're going to take a look at that and uh, see what's going on here. So I'm going to kill the car and we're going to get to this temp sensor and whenever, uh, whenever I find it. Uh, I will turn you back on. Alright, so we're here on the passenger side of the car. We're going to get up underneath this dash. I located the uh, the switch, or the sensor. Let me show it to you real quick. Right there is the temp sensor. And it just turns as a quarter turn. You turn it uh, counterclockwise and it'll pull out of there. So I will try to get that. So I just got me some, some needle nose pliers. Okay. Quarter turn. There she is. And that thing is ice cold. So, now there's a few things you could do. You could have the scan toe hooked up right now, but I already know that obviously cold air blowing across that uh, isn't, it's not picking up the right temperature. So, what we're going to do, we're going to disconnect it here. Get this camera set up. some service data to you. So first let me read what the what the book says. The evaporator temp sensor is a two-wire negative temperature coefficient thermistor. The sensor operates within a temperature range of minus 40 to 108 minus 40 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the sensor is installed at the evaporator and measures its temperature. If the temperature drops under 38 degrees Fahrenheit, the compressor will be switched off in order to prevent a frozen evap. Well, it's clearly not switching off, is it? So, I also have the resistances that this thing should be. So, right now, uh, this probably isn't still a little bit on the cold side or cooler side but it's about a hundred degrees according to my phone and according to this okay so what we've got oops, there's 104 degrees there's 86 there's 68 and, and I'm looking at the Fahrenheit chart we're just going to go with between 104 and 86 um, now you got to pay attention to up here because that's saying it's kilo ohms, which means that whenever this shows 2.66, that's actually actually 2,066. Two ta that's actually 2,666 ohms. Uh, in 86, 4.02, that's 4,000 uh, 20 ohms. So from 104 to 86 degrees. I'm going to assume we should be between 2.6 and 4 kilo ohms. Only because I know that the temperature, since this was cold, it may still be kind of warming up a little bit. But it's been an ambient temperature long enough where it, it I would think that it would be pretty close to whatever ambient is. Okay, so here we go. Can you see that meter? Uh, 
then there's just two pins in here. I'm just going to try to get in here and have this lead touch one of each. Doesn't matter which lead's on which. Okay, that no, that's not right. I obviously I was shorting the pins together. This is tougher than you think. Whenever you got a camera in your face, and let me see here. There we go. Okay, I'm touching both pins, and we've got about uh, that's point six hundred eighty kilo ohms. So that's about six hundred eighty ohms. Six hundred eighty. This doesn't even show. Now there is a, uh, a air temp, ambient air temp. There's a minimum and a max on this chart, but it shouldn't even go down to 680 ohms. This sh this is saying that at 40 degrees, I'm sorry, at 140 degrees, the lowest it should be is 1.2 kilo ohms to 1.28 kilo ohms. This is showing 600. What was it? 680 ohms. So, temp sensor's bad. Um, I'm going to go get another one. We'll measure its resistance before, uh, before I install it, and then we'll put it in and see what happens. So, to the parts house I go. Alright guys, I'm back. Here's the new uh, sensor. Let's get our chart. Turn the meter on. Let's see what this says here. What's the easiest way to do this? I don't think there is an easy way. I hope you can see that. 1.75 kilo ohms. 1700 ohms compared to 600 with the old one. So 1700, let's take a look at our chart. 1750, uh, so right here, 1.73 1 to 1.87 would equal 122 degrees. So this one's definitely uh, reading uh, quite a bit different than this one. This is the old one. It was reading 600, what was it, 680 degrees? This one's 1700, both in ambient temperatures. So let me go install this, and then we're going to fire the car up, and we're going to see what happens. Now, just in case I did not read this, I can't remember if I read this to you or not. This is this is the service uh, data out of uh, Pro Demand. The evaporator temperature sensor is a two-wire negative temperature coefficient thermistor. The sensor operates within a range of minus 40 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. The sensor is installed at the evaporator and measures its temperature. If the temperature drops under 38 degrees, the compressor will be switched off in order to prevent frozen evap. Well, since that uh, temp sensor was reading like 120 degrees, even though the evaporator was, was well below 30 or 38, the compressor was never sh uh, shutting off. It was never cycling. So it just continued to pump cold air and cold air and cold air. And what's happening is it eventually, the condensation that builds up on the evaporator eventually freezes because it gets under 32 degrees and it becomes a, a restriction. The, the evaporator completely uh, restricts the airflow flowing through it. So Let's go stick this in and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I've already got the new sensor hanging right there by the wire. I've got it. I went ahead and plugged it in because uh, there is enough wire to where you can plug it in. Stick it in the hole. Once you get the lugs engaged, you just turn it quarter turn, and it's locked in. Just so you, just to give you a better idea of where it's at. So there's the glove box. It is literally just right there. Super easy to get. To. I didn't have to remove any trim or anything. All right. 
let me get it started up and see how it's going to do. Okay, so we're coming down. We're at 48 degrees. It's roughly where we're at there. And what I'm watching for is this uh, request signal should go to no. The compressor clutch status should go to disengaged whenever the temperature gets roughly at about 38 degrees. Uh, or it'll probably get a little bit lower, 37 degrees, before it actually disengages. If this one is calibrated perfectly. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and rev the, the car up a little bit just to get there quicker. We're at 42.8 and we're just sitting here idling. It's about 100 degrees outside. So, let's see what happens here. We're at 41. High side pressure looks good. Um, okay, there we go. 39 degrees, disengaged. We got a no right here. We got a disengaged up there whenever it warms up. The compressor should come back on it. I just heard it engage and it says yes. So there you have it. 39. We'll watch it do it one more time. I just heard it disengage. It's disengaged, but no. So that one's working about right. 40 degree air is considered uh, about as cold as you uh, want to get. Me personally, It'd be nice if that uh, new uh, thermistor was calibrated a little bit on the high side so it would allow the temperature to come down to about 35 degrees before it disengaged the uh, compressor. But that's me. You can't hardly make it too cold for me whenever it's, 100, whenever it's above 100 degrees outside. As far as I'm concerned, the colder the better inside a car. But anyway, there it is. Uh, the fix for this was a new evaporator temp sensor uh, that's about all I got you guys take care